Hi all, I'm going to take you on a tour of a supernova explosion using light bright diagrams. We begin with a middle-aged star. Hydrogen is burning in a shell around the core of the star to create the energy we see as light. This burning creates helium as a byproduct. Helium, being heavier than hydrogen, sinks to the core of the star and just sits there. Since helium is not burning, it is not producing energy to hold up the outer layers, so the hydrogen has to burn hotter to make up for the hole in the center of the star. This more intense burning puffs out the outer layers of the star, which cool a bit and turn red. Now the star has become a red giant. At this point, the star itself is as large as the orbit of Mercury. It takes about a hundred million years for a star to become a red giant. After a few hundred more years, the core becomes hot enough to fuse helium as well as hydrogen. So all this helium ash in the core suddenly becomes a source of fuel for the fire. And as with any fire, burning helium leaves behind its own ash. In this case it is carbon. So we have a red giant burning hydrogen and helium and creating carbon that is settling in its core. But if the carbon core called a white dwarf is big enough then it can burn carbon too. This creates oxygen ash as a byproduct. The oxygen settles into the core until it gets hot enough to burn. Then it leaves behind neon ash which settles into the core. Notice I cycle here. As each element burns it leaves behind a heavier element as ash which eventually burns to leave behind an even heavier element etc etc. And each cycle of burning happens faster and faster as the elements get heavier and heavier. It takes only 1,000 years for the carbon to be turned into oxygen. Oxygen burns for only one year, and then it becomes neon, which becomes magnesium, which turns into silicon, then iron in less than one day. So from hundreds of millions of years of hydrogen burning, we come to only one single day of magnesium burning. We have an iron core. Iron, no matter what, cannot be burned in the interior of a star because it actually uses up energy in fusion instead of creating it. It's just too dense. So, suddenly, this mass of stars' internal fires go out. There is no more pressure from within to hold up the outer layers. The layers fall down to the core of the star. This creates tremendous pressure and temperatures that approach 10 billion degrees Kelvin. This phase is called photodisintegration. Much of the carbon, helium, hydrogen, magnesium, oxygen, and neon elements created during the star's lifetime are destroyed. In one second, tens of millions of years of evolution is undone. The core collapses into a soup of protons, neutrons, electrons, and high-energy photons. Protons and electrons are crushed together to create neutrons and release neutrinos in the process. Eventually, all that is left are the neutrons which cannot be pushed further together. So the core, now a neutron star, resists the infalling material from the rest of the star. But that material has a tremendous amount of energy behind it. As it crashes into this impenetrable core, it bounces off at incredible speeds. This creates the supernova shock wave that heads out into space, crashing into what used to be the star. The intense heat and pressure in the shock front fuses together the material from the former star to form new elements. Almost all elements in the entire universe heavier than iron, and definitely all elements heavier than lead, were formed in supernova explosions. These explosions are also responsible for spreading the material through space. It is these elements that make the creation of solar systems possible, including the creation of water, plants, life, technology, eBay, and five pounds of light bite pregs. Just about everything you can see or touch at some point was created in an exploding star. Thanks for listening. For more, visit slackerastronomy.org. Thanks.